is a mass human sacrifice currently taking place somewhere in America. I <laughs> like how I giggled at the end of that. Oh man, this is going to be a crazy episode, guys. Strap in. My eyes are already watering. I'm really sick if you can't tell. And then we meet a young woman who's house-sitting for a few relatives who are out of town. She thinks she's just going to raid the refrigerator while watching Netflix all night long. Instead, she realizes she's about to be involved in a life-and-death struggle against a paranormal force beyond all understanding. Today on Dead Rabbit Radio. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dead Rabbit Radio. I'm your host, Jason Carpenter. I'm not having a great day. I'm actually really, really sick, but I hope that you guys are having a great day. I really, really do. Hope you guys had an awesome, awesome weekend. It's not COVID. I know that's probably the first thing everybody's thinking. It's not COVID. I did get tested for that. It's not that, but whatever it is, it's the sickest I've been since COVID. Um, I'm a little bit better now, but you can obviously tell that my voice is pretty stuffy, and my bones, <laughs> my bones kind of hurt. Like, Jason, maybe you might want to be in the hospital. Nah, I'd rather be spending some time with you guys. Speaking of that, you know, open a soda here. I'm getting my medicine ready to take while I'm recording this episode. <laughs> It'll be a true theater of the mind. It'll be like you're sitting right here. Originally, I had planned on giving a shout out. To a loyal listener who goes by the name Mr. K. Apparently he has a a food cart. Mr. K's Secret Kitchen. Where he sells sausages. And I thought, well, you know what? Because he says that he plays my podcast. <laughs> what? I don't think this is a good idea. I don't think it's a good idea to be playing Dead Rabbit Radio at your food cart. Because you just never know what you're going to get, right? You could get a cool ghost story. You could get... A 20-minute rant about how disgusting Arby's is or or worse, right? I've done worse stories. But I did do that story where the two combined and it was a man. I think he was he was a child molester who was also peeing into Arby's milkshakes. You just never know what you're going to get. I'll put that episode in the show notes because it's, it's a classic. It's a classic. But anyways, originally I was like, okay, I'm going to give Mr. K a shout out. He's doing his part. He's getting the word out about Dead Rabbit Radio. Then I realized, probably, because he's going to want to play this episode for sure. In the episode, he has the shout-outs. And I go, I'm going to be too sick for this episode. So in- <laughs> instead of him, <laughs> I'm telling you guys right now, this episode is going to be a little wacky. Instead of him, I invite you. You are going to be our captain, our pilot of this episode. You- because you truly are loyal, listening to the show. In sickness and in health. Really, really appreciate it. So you're going to be our captain. You're going to be our pilot this episode. We're going to save Mr. K for an episode where he can actually broadcast. Where someone's all buying a sausage from him. And over the loudspeakers, you hear a guy all... Uh. Today's episode is going to be crazy. I'm got. i not just going to talk randomly about stuff. Today's episode, we got some crazy, crazy things to talk about. But I do want to start off... Maybe it's because I'm a big crybaby, which I think is a fair assessment. I do get sick. Um, I wouldn't say more than the average person, but I'll say this. When I get sick like this, it's pretty intense. And I may (laughs) have a problem, not with my immune system, I'm not going to say that. But I did want to share this story because I did a story about a couple, maybe it was like two years ago where I got really sick and started to hallucinate. It's kind of like that. It's kind of like that. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and toss you the keys to the Jason Jalopy. Everyone climb on board as you drive us out of Dead Rabbit Command and all the way to my place in Hood River. (laughs) Nice leisurely drive down into the town of Hood River. I thought this was just so interesting. I probably drank too much cough syrup yesterday. Because <laughs> here's the thing, I was so sick, I didn't know what time it was. Like, sure, I had a clock, but I couldn't remember when was the last time I took medicine. And I'll say this too to, to all the future CIA agents or Mossad agents or KGB agents who may be plotting my death in the future, 
I have a habit of forgetting which medicine I've already taken. I have this little medicine bag, and sure, everything's in a bottle, but like what I'll do is I'll start taking medicine, and then I'll go, did I already take my Tylenol? <laughs> There's like 500 pills in a bottle. I don't know. And I'll sit there, and I'll look at the bottle, and I was like, did I already take two Tylenol? I take two Tylenol every six hours and three aspirin. That's the type of medicine I'm talking about. It's not like hardcore stuff but i'd sit there and i'll look at the bottle and i'll be like well i'll know for sure in like a half hour an hour when i'm all sore but who i don't know so i always don't take extra if i don't remember exactly you're like riveting podcasting jason this is like the geriatric podcast all of a sudden you're like great this is the episode i get to drive around then sitting in my place i'm talking about Come here, whippersnappers. Let's talk about let's talk about grandpa's medicine. You're like, oh man, don't worry, don't worry. This is going somewhere. I'll forget whether or not I took medicine, and I always default to well, if I don't remember, don't take more of it. Which is probably a good tool. Now, people close to me have said, Jason, just get one of those things that old people have that will tell you, like those little pill boxes. You know, like, you open it up, you put pills in it. It, The thing is, is, like, yeah, that works. You know what I'm talking about? So they have a pill box that you can divide it up seven days. Or if you take medication throughout the day, it's divided up by the hour or by every five hours. I've gotten those in the past. This is not a setup for a joke. I've gotten those in the past, and then I forget about them. I forget where I put them. Or I forget to use them. Now, that could just be, that could be forgetfulness. I I actually have always chalked it up to just laziness. So I'm like, ah, oh, whatever. That's, I'm not going to do that. That's an extra step. As my liver is exploding, I'm like, ah, it's too much work. I'm all hooked up to all these machines in the hospital. If I don't remember if I took the medicine, I don't take more of it. I just kind of deal with it. Which sucks. But yesterday I was so sick. And also that's for medicine that can cause serious side effects. So if you take too much aspirin... You know, you can cause internal bleeding. If you take too much Tylenol, you can blow your liver out in relatively short order. However, when I went to go buy my med, this is YouTube. <laughs> this YouTube's gonna take this episode down. When I went to go buy my cough syrup from the local Walmart, I specifically got the cough syrup that does not have Tylenol in it. Most most cough syrups have Tylenol in it, but I got the Equate brand. The Tussin DM Max. And this only has uh, dextromorphin and Goofinessian. Okay? In it. This you can drink. This is not a health podcast. I don't know if I should actually say this next word. Um, you would have to drink heroic doses of this to have any sort of immediate or long-lasting liver or stomach damage. I'll put it that way. You would have to drink a bunch of this. This is the type of stuff that people used to get high. They call it robo-tripping because Robitussin. Now, the mistake a lot of people make (laughs) as you break into Nobad and you're scribbling down. What was the name of that brand name again? The mistake a lot of people make is they get the ones with Tylenol in them. They get the ones with acetafetamin in it, and that will blow your liver out. You will die. Now, you can take too much of this stuff. I think Lil Wayne recently... Almost had a heart attack. So I'm not (laughs) saying that when I said heroic doses, I was thinking of my hero, Lil Wayne. You can really like do some damage, but not in the course of if you take an extra dose or two throughout the day. It's not as bad as taking too much Tylenol. So I made sure to get the, (laughs) get your notepad ready, the Equate Tussin Dia Max version of this. So I think. I took too much of this yesterday. And I was sitting, watch, this is what I do, like when I have free time, which I don't have a lot of, I watch movies. And I was sitting there, I'm just watching movies at random, watching horror movies, I'm subscribed to Shudder, and I have my Amazon Prime. And I go, Creep Show 3? Okay, cool, like I do I love creeps. I did that whole story about that guy who was, the child molester who was peeing in shakes at Arby's. I love creeps. I love shows. Um, I love threes. I love the third of anything. Return of the Jedi is the best. Creep show three. No, I'd never seen it before. I put it in. 
And I was like, dude, like it, it was maybe 10 minutes into it. I go, I'm tripping balls. I'm so high right now of cough syrup. Accidentally. Current and f- current and future employers listening to this podcast. Accidentally. I'm really, I'm really messed up. I'm watching the first story and I have to keep rewinding it. And I go, what in the world? It's about this schoolgirl. She's probably like, I don't know, 16, 17 years old. Dressed up like a Catholic schoolgirl. Walking down the street. Okay, <laughs> What does any of this have to do with Dead Rabbit Radio? I also have to get this off my chest. This is like therapy for me. I'm watching this. And she goes to her house. And her dad has just gotten... I guess I should say this because I very rarely talk about it on this show. Um, the show. The family is white. This is a white family. Usually I don't bring up race because very rarely is it relevant to a ghost story. However, this is so bizarre. I was like, dude, I'm, I'm tripping and the movie's only 10 minutes in. This white girl goes home to her white family. The dad's sitting there with a new remote, a new television remote. And the girl walks in and everyone starts making fun of her, which is fine, whatever. She's like a mean girl and the family's being back to her. And the grandma starts saying that this 16-year-old girl doesn't have a big enough butt. And then she starts talking about the girl's boobs. And I was like, what in the way is going on? And then the dad has the television remote and he goes, oh, here's the button that changes the contrast and the color mode of our television and he presses the button and the girl teleports to outside the house and then she goes in the house and her family's black she's with a black family now she's still white and then the same scene we just saw played out sexual comments about a 16 year old girl the grandma's still going on about how big her butt is how it's too small Plays out, but now it's a black family. And then the dad goes, oh, look at this new remote I got. Here is the subtitle button. And he clicks it. And then the family turns into a Mexican family with subtitles, with English subtitles. Okay, whatever. (laughs) Whatever, dude. (laughs) I have no idea what's going on. That was normal. <laughs> it's not. It's not. Obviously, it's impossible. It's like sci-fi. It's not. It's not spooky. Here's the thing: if you came home and your family was black, I don't necessarily think that qualifies as creep show, right? I mean, this is weird. I'm gonna say it's weird. Definitely Mandela effect. And it's almost as if the directors could read my mind. It was almost as if. I was hallucinating due to... You're already, like, Googling this movie. You're like, Jason, this isn't real. <laughs> this movie doesn't exist. And almost as if the director could read my mind at that point, they show the 16-year-old white girl, and I noticed her hand was weird. She had a weird-looking hand now. I was like, what? So I rewound it, and her arm was melting. <laughs> wait, 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 what? What does this have to do with anything? They never showed her go, ah, my arm. She runs back. I like rewound it a couple times. Your ass ain't big enough. I'm like, what in the world is this movie? Just explain why her arm's melting. I don't need to hear these comments about this girl. She goes back into the house and the dad, who's now Hispanic dad, who has English subtitles, he goes, oh, here's the button to like send us to like the different like region controls you know how dvds have region controls he hits it and then i'll be honest i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure i blacked out at this point i think they became persian or something like that i'm not entirely for sure i think i did pass out to be completely medically honest i was very sick and i had taken a lot of cough medicine the next thing i know she's completely melted But everyone else in the family is white. Like, I must have missed something. She's like this melted goblin walking around the house. And you you go, Jason, you're complaining about a movie that you blacked out during. I'm not done. Because now I'm fully aware again. She's walking around the house completely melted. 
going, it's me, it's me, it's Alice. And they're like, no, get the gun, get the gun, blow it away. And then the inventor of the remote control shows up as this melted girl. Very disgusting special effects, by the way. Creepshow 3 earned its name as she's running like tumors are falling out of her. <laughs> God, you see, Mr. K, that's why you're not on this episode. Tumors are falling out of her. <laughs> so gross. Tumors are falling out of her. And she lands at the feet of the inventor of the remote control who lived a couple houses down. And he goes, he goes, oh, I see that you guys accidentally got my remote control. I can fix this. And then the dad runs out of the house with a gun. And the inventor is holding a bunny rabbit, a white bunny rabbit. And the family completely forgets they have a daughter named Alice, like she never existed. And then the inventor puts the bunny rabbit in the backseat of his car. And he goes, I'll take care of you, Alice. That was the first 10 minutes. It was the first 10 minutes of one of the most incomprehensible movies. And again, I watched the whole thing. And it started having this weird interconnecting story where the bunny rabbit shows up again. And the inventor bought this mail order bride from Argentina. But his two students thought that it was actually a super advanced robot. So they cut her to pieces looking for the wiring. And it was a real human. And they realized that after they had completely like cut her up. And so they left the house, obviously left the crime scene. And when the inventor came home, and so the inventor goes, oh no, the woman I love the most has now been murdered. So then he becomes a voodoo priest and at the ending resurrects her from the dead and marries her. Speaking of Mr. K's sausage, the last story was about a rich doctor who was hated people like he was a misanthrope but he was like a slimy doctor who loved money and this hobo was like hey dude can i get some money and he's like nah nah you can't get no money and then he went and he bought a hot dog he bought a hot dog and then he tripped and the hot dog rolled in the ground so he gave the dirty hot dog to the hobo and the hobo (laughs) the hobo ate it which is kind of on the hobo right he didn't have to eat it He saw it was covered in dirt. Well, the hobo eats the hot dog and the hobo starts choking and everyone just stands over the hobo and they're all calling the the ambulance. They're like, somebody needs to help this man from choking. And a guy runs up and goes, is there a doctor? Is there a doctor? And the doctor's just like walking away pretending he's not a doctor. And the hobo chokes to death on this dirty hot dog, which again, is kind of on him. And then the whole time this hobo ghost is chasing him around and just keeps spitting up mud and and a gross hot dog and then eventually the doctor gets so scared he sits down on the pavement and the hobo goes that was the best hot dog i've ever eaten and then the doctor dies and then this is when i was like i've completely lost my mind then we find out that the hot dog vendor he turns around and his face melts off. And I was like, okay, Jason, I think you actually took some acid. His face melts off and I just felt sick to my stomach. I'm watching and I'm like, I'm so... I was like, dude, I'm just so high. This movie doesn't exist. I wouldn't be shocked if someone came over and I was staring at just desktop wallpaper and I'm all throwing up. I'm like, oh no, more tumors, blah. So finally, when it was over, I didn't want any spoilers. I had no idea what was going to happen next. Finally, when it was over, I was like, that movie's not real. That either parts of it weren't real or none of it was. That I was actually just staring at a blank screen for an hour and a half. I went to Creepshow 3's IMDb page and all the reviews were this movie <laughs> this movie is incomprehensible it doesn't make any sense and the sense of relief that washed over me by hearing other people being like dude what was up with that rabbit what does any of this have to do with anything else so weird it was so weird <laughs> weird enough <laughs> was it weird enough to talk about for 20 minutes on dead rabbit radio i think so because I will say later in the day, or maybe even when the movie was still playing, I got up to use the bathroom. And when I walked out of the bathroom, I thought my window, I thought my apartment was like 100 feet in the sky. 
And I thought my windows had been replaced with nothing, that it was just like a cool summer breeze in a in a massive skyscraper. Like, and I go, oh, dude, you're tripping. You're tripping. Like, there were points of the day where I could tell that my reality, my access to reality was not all there. So it wasn't like I just had a little bit of cough syrup. Like, I realized, I was like, dude, you're, you're robo-tripping. You're <laughs> straight up, you're a little overdose on cough syrup right now. There were points in the day when that happened, but to sit there and watch a movie like that, there was a lot of movies I watched, there's a lot of movies I watched when I was high on cough syrup, but when you get a movie like that, the perfect, it's just so poorly made. I'm sorry if you worked on that movie. I'm sorry if you worked on that movie back in 2008 or whenever it came out. And you're listening to this podcast. It was so weird. And to be really, really high. It, 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 I mean, again, I watched maybe 10, 12 movies yesterday. I only suffered like three hours ago. I was scared. I was so scared. I was like, I don't want to become a rabbit. This is my name. Don't change the channel, daddy. <sighs> But anyways, what a combination of, of events, right? I'm like, Jason, that's not really events. You got high. <laughs> you watched a terrible movie. And then you made us listen about it for 20 minutes. Don't worry. We got some more stuff to do. Doesn't involve me. But um, let's go ahead and toss you the keys to the... Do we have enough time? <laughs> I actually have a bunch of stories planned. I didn't mean to go on for that long <laughs> about that movie. Let's go ahead, though. Um, let's go ahead, just for safety's sake, because I want to make sure everyone gets to fly the Carpenter Copter. Let's go ahead and toss you the keys to the Carpenter Copter. You got your flight suit on, right? We're leaving behind my place. Fly us all the way out, too. This will probably be a quickie, but... Fly us all the way out, too. Wherever... <laughs> so quick, I didn't do any research on this. Fly us all the way out, too. Wherever Burning Man is held at. I think we got time for another one after this. I just found this so interesting. Because there's... A, a lot of times I don't cover recent stuff on the show. But every so often you've got to. Because it... Not because I think there's anything to it. But because I like to highlight when prophecies go wrong so if you're listening to this episode the day it came out and you somehow powered through the first 20 minutes of it you're like okay okay jason the movie was weird we get it you may listen to this and go wow you know something might be happening out there and who knows right in the world of conspiracy theory who knows but if you're listening to this episode a year or two from now you'll be like what that was a thing People were actually worried about that. People are worried about this. This is a big thing going on right now in the conspiracy theory community. So what it is, what it boils down to, is there's that big festival, I think they have it every year, called Burning Man. It's where a bunch of hippies and a bunch of tech people and celebrities and stuff like that stand out in the middle of nowhere. You can, <laughs> you can tell my opinion on it right away. I'm not hiding, not hiding the ball on this one. You go out in the middle of nowhere... And you kind of like, I don't even know if they listen to music. I'm sure I'm sure there's a radio playing somewhere. You get like, you know, tens of thousands of people show up to the middle of nowhere. It's like this festival thing. where I, I really, I cannot, I cannot even pretend to hide my disdain for this. It's a festival to get together. I think it's one of those things that probably started off really cool. And the consumerism, I think that's, to me, it just, when you have a scheduled festival like that, outside of a, outside of a ghost festival, which I often speak at, but you know what I mean? When you set up this thing, like, we're going to burn down the man, we're going to burn a man, burning, I don't know if that's why they call it that, I don't know. <laughs> this, uh, I also think it's funny, you can tell I have zero idea of what they do, and I'm like, that sucks. This is dumb, even though I don't know anything about it. This is a good insight into me as a person. I don't know much about it. To me, it seems like it's a cool idea. People going completely off the grid, hanging out with other people off the grid, building relationships, sharing an experience, and at the end of all of it, burning down the giant effigy of a dude. Or anything, right? A rabbit. <laughs> a rotting, tumor-filled girl. Whatever, it doesn't matter. But when it becomes a consumerism thing, right? When you start having, I, I guess, you know, I don't know if they have sponsors even, but even just like making plans to do something. I don't know. It just rubs me the wrong way. I know. 
I know nothing about it, but I don't like it. The man who's so old he forgets when to take medication. Man yells at Cloud. Anyways, but again, I would never stop anyone from going to it. If you're a huge, if you're on fire right now, I support you. Like, I don't have a problem with people who go to Burning Man. I would never go. I will go on the record that I'm definitely not after this story. You're like, Jason, what is going on? So anyways, they do this thing. It's called Burning Man. It's every year. This year, though, there's two stories going on. People are trapped at Burning Man because it's really like in the middle of a desert. They build up this city in the middle of the desert. And there's towns nearby, but it's kind of like this place that kind of just doesn't really exist. Anyways, 70,000 people out there, however many people are out there, and they're like, a storm has rolled through the area, and they're trapped. They've been told there is no way to leave the area. Apparently, the airport has been shut down. The roads have been shut down because of this storm, and people are trapped, and the authorities have been telling people, conserve your food and your water. It's going to be a while before we can get to you. A couple days, right? This is what they're saying. A couple days. A lot of people are going to be stuck there. They don't have the supplies. Probably don't have, like, the right amount of even clothing or toiletries. People could be getting beaten up over a bar of deodorant out in the desert right now. So I'm reading this, and I go, wow, that totally sucks. Like, I could see how that could happen. You know, the roads get washed out. And then I kept reading articles about this. It was, I get it, Nevada's flat. It was a half an inch of rain. Like, you can walk through that. <laughs> I mean, that's nothing. How tiny are the people who go to this thing? Well, this is where the conspiracy theory comes from. I've seen this pop up around online. One is that the rain is mixing with um, the desert sand has some quick lime in it. Which, if you know anything about quicklime, I didn't. I had to do a little bit of research, but if rain, if quicklime, <laughs> this is actually quite terrifying. <laughs> As I was talking about half inch of rain, you're like, oh, those crybabies. <laughs> this is horrifying. If this is true, a half inch of rain <laughs> is world ending. If this part of it's true. And we're not even getting really to the main conspiracy theory part of it. Chemists out there, I know a lot of chemists listen to this podcast, despite the fact that I insult them all the time. If, <laughs> this is so terrifying. Really, now uh, the whole thing about Creep Show 3 uh, kind of fits. Quick lime, so like I said, I go, I don't know a ton about it. I just typed in, <laughs> is quick lime harmful? I think you can use it to like, desiccate bodies understand that, but I thought, well, what would it do to a living person? If you type in quicklime, is quicklime harmful? The very first result I got on Google was uh, contact with uh, quicklime can cause irritation to eye, skin, respiratory system, or gastrointestinal tract. Very next sentence, <laughs> quicklime reacts vigorously with water, releasing heat which may ignite combustible materials in some instances. A desert full of burning men and women. That's one of the conspiracy theories that's going on, is that this is a mass, or it's going to be a mass human sacrifice. It's going to be a mass human sacrifice. Basically, people are just going to blow up all over the place in Burning Man. And and the part of the conspiracy, now I do remember where it's at. It's in Black Rock. I believe it's in Black Rock, Nevada. Let me double check that. So it's in the Black Rock Desert in Nevada. I didn't know specifically where it was at. So the conspiracy theory is there's going to be a mass human sacrifice. People are just going to catch on fire. And... You have the idea of Black, the reason why BlackRock Desert, because BlackRock is the name of one of the big investment firms. There's BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard. And these are the, the investment firms you see a lot tied to the idea of ESG, which is environmental and uh, social governance. 
I believe is what it is. But anyways, so you have the, like, they're basically, what when I was a kid, you had the Trilateral Commission and those are, and the Bilderberg Group. Those are the terms, you, they're, they're corporate entities that were real, that were secretly controlling the world behind the scenes. The, the word Illuminati, you didn't hear much when I was a kid. Now, now kids say it. Now kids know what it is because of the internet, but you knew of it if you were a conspiracy theorist, but even if you weren't a conspiracy theorist, you'd see in the news pop up the Trilateral Commission and the Bilderberg Group. Nowadays, you do have that same thing where like these are the corporate side of the conspiracy. The the these big three they control like trillions and trillions of dollars in investments. And the idea is is that if you want to get investments from these companies, then you need to do what they say. And they control a lot of the uh, retiree or state pension funds in state. So that's where that comes from. So they're saying that because you have this investment group called BlackRock, they're sacrificing all these people at BlackRock Desert. They've been at BlackRock Desert for 1996, I, I should say. I mean, I mean, as far as I know, there hasn't this hasn't happened before. But I don't want to spend this time like debunking the conspiracy theory or anything like that. I wanted to, because that's not even the main conspiracy theory. This I, That is the idea, though, is that so far only one person has died. It didn't say whether or not they blew up. But the idea is, is that there is a real event going on where people are trapped. That is true. And none of the news reports are saying they're worried about the quick lime and everyone exploding. That was not in the Wall Street Post. That was not on Fox News. That is just something that's going around the conspiracy sphere. So that's not given. The, but basically they're saying, yes, there is a half an inch of rain, which despite the fact that you may explode at any moment, doesn't sound that bad. You could walk through it. People have walked out of camp. They just can't drive out. They can't fly out. But the more interesting conspiracy theory, and this is how things normally work out, right? There is an event that is real. The Hawaiian fires, the tragic Hawaiian fires. I think now it's considered the worst wildfire in American history. A real event that happens. And then conspiracy theories start. It's really too early to tell what's going on. And you have legitimate conspiracy theories. And then you have crazy ones. Legitimate conspiracy theory is that the fires seem to target the poorer sides of the island. And the richer sides did not get as burned or burned at all. Now, I don't have any proof of that. I've just seen maps and arrows saying this is the poor side of town and this is the rich side of town and this is where the fire goes. I don't know if that's true. It would make sense. I'm not saying it's true. It's the same thing with Hurricane Katrina. It's pretty pretty fishy that only the poor parts of town got submerged in 10, 12 feet of water. Come on, Burning Man people. You only got half an inch. Whether or not that's true, because again, I'm just looking at a map. I don't know the layout of the island. It may be true. And that could be true, but they could just go, it was the winds. Like we had, there wasn't that, there was a fire brigade blocking the fire and pushing it the other way. But that's what we would call a legitimate, not saying it's true, but it's a legitimate conspiracy theory. It would make sense if it was true. Because we just know that is unfortunately how things work out. I don't think that, I don't even think when they blew up the, le- I do think they blew up the levee. I do think that. I think there was a decision made to blow up the levees in Katrina, but I don't think they thought, oh, this is going to kill a whole lot of black people. I don't think that level of menace was on their mind. I think they're thinking, well, we got to save this part of town. So we're going to flood this part of town. But I don't think they thought, I mean, maybe that again is just me being naive. I don't think that they meant, you're like, Jason, you're naive. They didn't blow up the levees in the first place. Well, I, I do subscribe to that conspiracy theory. And I think a lot more people died during Hurricane Katrina and they covered it up. I think more people died during Hurricane Katrina in the aftermath than died during 9-11. And they needed... Man, we got, we got, real, contro- we got like real controversial and dark here real quick, didn't we? Welcome to the mind of Jason Gardner. I think, I'm not knocking the people who died during 9-11 by any means. But Bush cannot have another 9-11 on his hands with his hands possibly in that water metaphorically i do think that that was but again i have no proof of that that's a conspiracy theory that they pulled the trigger because they go listen both sides could flood or one side could flood a little bit and the other side not flood at all 
So let, what are we going to do? And they blew the levees, and they did not. I don't think they expected to kill six thousand people or ten thousand, however many people died. I don't think it was as few as they said. But we can have conversations about that. That's a legitimate conspiracy theory. You can talk about that. When you start talking about, and I know, I, I know, I might lose some people here. I don't think I'll lose subscribers or anything. You never know, but. Um, when you start talking about space lasers coming down and shooting into Hawaii purposely to burn the poor people, that's when I think you lose a lot of people. I think that's even when you lose a lot of conspiracy theorists. Like, I watched those videos. I watched the video. I'll see if I can find it again. It was like a YouTube short but where they were testing a laser on different colors. It was like a science video. And they showed that this particular laser did not... Sh- set the color blue on fire which would make sense the wavelengths the way that it's reacting different colors it would burn all these other colored cloth but when it hit blue it wouldn't burn anymore and then when it moved to the next color it burned again and they made the comparison they go why are all these rich people's houses painted blue in hawaii why are their roofs blue So the conspiracy theory was was that a laser either being shot from space or from somewhere on earth which I mean, I guess if the space laser is too ridiculous, a laser. Be- but the point is, is that I'm looking at this is the way I look at all this stuff, right? I'm looking at this and I go, OK, let's assume that some of this stuff is true, right? I'm watching this video. I don't know what the context of this video is. I'm just listening or reading the subtitles of someone making a TikTok video over it. And then show me photos of blue houses. House of blue. I don't know if those are actually celebrity houses. I don't know if those houses are actually in Hawaii or in that area. There's no context for anything. But it does start to put those... I mean, I obviously remember it, right? Out of all the YouTube's videos I watch, I don't know how many times the Whatever podcast shows up on my YouTube shorts. And I like kind of remember what they're talking about. But I mean, that, this one grabbed my attention. I remembered it. I remember enough detail to kind of talk about it. But that's a conspiracy theory where you start to lose other conspiracy theorists. Same thing, like you'll have people who believe that there's a shadowy organization running America. There's shadowy groups running the entire world. But when you try to tell them that the moon landing's fake or the earth is flat, they're like, that's just dumb. They'll believe in all sorts of other conspiracy theories. There are certain conspiracy theories that push too hard. This Burning Man thing, yes, real event. Flooding. <laughs> I mean, again, not flooding. A half inch of water, but whatever. People, people blowing up. That may be happening, but you have a real event that is being covered. Then you have a conspiracy theory that this is actually the setup for a mass human sacrifice. But here's the interesting one. That stuff might be legit. Again, I don't think there's going to be a mass human sacrifice there. But this is the interesting one. This is the interesting one 40 minutes into the podcast. That there was a slight rain. Definitely not enough to shut down an airport. Definitely not enough to shut down the roads. That water, yes, if you look it up online, when it activates with quicklime, reacts vigorously and may set combustible things on fire that's true what the conspiracy the big conspiracy theory going out there we've seen photos of this people are tweeting about it who are apparently on the ground is that there has been a release of either a man-made disease a bioweapon or ebola itself has hit american shores found its way into the Burning Man Festival and is spreading like wildfire through the attendees. There's very scant evidence for this. Very, very scant evidence for this that I've seen. I saw a photo, again, undated, unlocated photo. I don't know if that's the term, unlocated, but... It's a photo of a hazmat van, what appears to be a hazmat van, maybe two or three of them, and people walking around in biohazard suits. Behind them, there's not a guy wearing a shirt saying, <laughs> wearing a shirt saying I went to bio, I went to Burning Man, and all I got was Ebola. Then unverified tweets of people going, hey guys, um, people are spitting up blood, vomiting blood. 
See if I can find screenshots of some of those treats, tweets. So that is the that. So I mean, like, here's the thing: it, it, that is more realistic than space lasers. I, I've done episodes about Ebola on this podcast before. I do think that it's we have been not. I'm not saying that. Well, you know, I'll go, <laughs> there's no other way to say it. We have been very lucky that it has not left the part of Africa that it is in. I'm not saying, I'm glad it's only them. All of Africa, when I say we, I basically mean everybody living, other Africans included, that not in that particular region. Because I did a story, like, we talk about it every once in a while. We did a story a couple of years ago where it was on, for the very first time, was on the outskirts of a major city. Ebola has always been relegated to more rural parts of this particular region in Africa. And they, for the first time, we're starting to see like in the outskirts of the suburbs. And they're like, if this gets into a major city, like everything changes. This is so viral. Ebola is such a vicious disease that if you took it to a festival in the middle of nowhere, 70,000 people crammed into a relatively small location. I mean, there's just open desert all around you. And you, let's say, infected 10, 20, 30, 40 people with Ebola. I mean, your organs liquefy. You begin vomiting. Again, <laughs> Mr. K, this isn't your episode, so don't play this one. You can begin vomiting and defecating blood. You basically liquefy from the inside out. And all that blood is super contagious. Really, what they found is that if you have Ebola and you get on a city bus and you grab the, you know, like the strap on the bus, you touching stuff on the bus, you're like, oh, my favorite, my favorite bus driver, mwah, mwah, giving them big old kisses. That, I, if I remember correctly, it's been a while since I've done that episode, but that's contagious for like an, a couple hours. If you walked up and you grabbed that, because it's like through your sweat, it's through your liquids, right? If you walked up and you grabbed that same bus strap, you could get it. Super viral. And you imagine a place like Burning Man, right? People are like walking around picking up McDonald's cups and being like, oh man, isn't it good to give the big middle finger to consumerism? Because you're wearing your Gap shirt. <laughs> you're like, just, just, you don't know anything about it, dude. <laughs> Anyways, just all dancing, sweaty, all next to each other. You're like, oh, isn't this a cool song? <laughs> isn't this a cool song? Really, really makes me want to sweat. Makes me sweat even more and bleed a little bit out of my orifices. That could be the case. And here's the thing. Here, this is the thing. We'll wrap it up like this. This episode's going on for a while, and but I don't really even know. I don't really know if it's been particularly entertaining to listen to. I've had a ball recording it, but you want to think this is the scariest thing about all of these stories, all of these conspiracy theory stories, is that we have been sold a lie our entire lives, and that is. We, I don't even know how to put it, man. Like, this, this is kind of demoralizing. If you find yourself on the unfortunate side of an event, let's take this for example. Let's say that you go out to Burning Man. And you just happen to catch Ebola. Well, here, let's back up for a second. If you went to Burning Man and it flooded and the quicklime started setting people on fire and 500 people burned to death and you escaped, maybe your hand got a little singed. You're like, ah, trying to reach into the fire. <laughs> My grimace cup. I need that to prove what a consumer I am. Ah, I think it'd be a pretty big news story. You'd see a pretty big, uh, you'd probably see like a couple episodes, uh, you know, the news for a while would cover the science behind quicklime. You would see your local news have a, a, you know, local, I don't know, kids host or whatever, Bill Nye or whatever, talk about it. YouTubers would be like, isn't that crazy? Like, what a horrific event. Who could have foreseen it? And that's for, true, right? I mean, his chemist could have. 
But for the most part, this area doesn't get a lot of rain. It was just like a bad confluence of events. Uh, the, probably Burning Man would get shut down, at least for a couple of years. It'd be a bunch of lawsuits. And people would know that that had happened to you. People would know that, yeah, you were at Burning Man and you burned your hand. You would not tell them part about the Grimace Cup. You're like, oh, I was reaching out for this really hot girl. She was super hot, but I couldn't save her. But I burned my hand trying. And everyone's like, ah, you're a hero. You are truly a hero. <laughs> you have a little... You never open your hand. If they did, if you did, you'd see a little melted impression of Grimace on your palm. You held on for as long as you could. <laughs> I keep my hand closed in memory of her. In memory of that hot chick. No pun intended. Good night, Grimace. I love you. Mwah. I think you could equate that with all, all sorts of disasters, right? All sorts of horrific events. Things that are highly publicized. But let's say you went to Burning Man. Let's flip it a bit. You're at Burning Man, and there's an Ebola outbreak. Let's say, I don't remember how many people died during the fire. I said a couple hundred. Let's say that. Let's keep the numbers relatively close, right? Because I don't want to be like, and everyone died but you. But let's say 500 people got Ebola while they're at this. Like 500 people died. You saw people pooping themselves, pooping blood until they died. They're screaming out for help. And you're scared, obviously. That'd be way more dramatic than watching someone burn to death. And I'm sure burning to death isn't... I doubt that's fun to watch, too. But, you know, one takes a matter of, I don't know, a minute and a half. The other one takes a matter of days. And you have people coming in in their white vans and their white suits and their, their soldiers. All of a sudden, there's soldiers everywhere. And someone you were just talking to three days ago, you see them get carted off and thrown in the back of a truck. And you're starting to hear whispers. You're starting to hear whispers about there's something in the camp. There's something at Burning Man, and that's the real reason they won't let you leave. And you think this is a rumor. You think that maybe it is the rain. Maybe the road did get washed out. Don't know why a plane can't land, but... And then you actually see it. You see someone fall to the ground and just begin bleeding out of their butthole. And they're begging you for help. And that is when another van shows up and people in biohazard suits grab this young person, throw them in the back of a van. And now you know for a fact there is something going on here. The military isn't telling you anything. The people in the white suits aren't telling you anything. You're making guesses. Whatever it is, though, seems to end. Because even though entire portions of the park are now uninhabited, you either were there when the white trucks showed up, or you stepped out. And if you stepped out, you were rigorously observed. Until finally, days, maybe a week or two later, you're allowed to go home. You've had no internet access. They've cut off all contact, which is extremely easy to do. They have all sorts of cell phone jammers and things like that. You finally get home and you're like super, you're so concerned. Of what, what is anyone going to think when they tell, when you tell them that Ebola reached the shores of the United States, you were trapped there and you get home and all the news reports say that the whole area was flooded and a couple cell phone towers went down. And they sent in the military to help coordinate rescue efforts, but it finally took a week and they were able to get the cars out of the mud and everything's fine. That is what every newspaper, every news report is saying about it. There's not a single mention. Not only is there not a single mention of Ebola, there's not a single mention of most, if not all, of the names of the people who died. Not your friend who got thrown in the back of the van. None of the other of hundreds of people. Maybe a name here or there. Someone died death to misadventure. One person drank themselves to death. One person tried walking away into the desert and was found a couple weeks later. Died of exposure. But the 500 people plus... That you know, if they didn't die directly, they definitely... Didn't leave those vans. No mention. 
no mention of them at all. It's scary because you think like those 500 people, again, you go, Jason, what happened to those 500 people? They used to do, again, I don't want to get too political. We're going on too long with this, but there used to be this game that the Bush administration, we were like, wow, Bush, Jason, you're getting real political. Bush administration used to play this game. Well, again, this was a conspiracy theory, right? To be fair. But they used to play this game where they kept down the losses of people, soldiers, U.S. soldiers who died in Iraq. What they would do is they would stabilize you. You get shot, get hit with an IED, something like that. Unfortunate. Tragic, right? Young man, young woman. Slowly losing their life. They're stabilized. They're immediately put on a plane and they're shipped off to Ramstein. Ramstein, that's the military base in Germany, which I think was the closest out-of-conflict zone base we had. And if you died during the flight, or if you died at the base in Germany, you were not counted as a, a war casualty. You did not die in the conflict zone. So that's how they kept the numbers down. So you can play with numbers like that. Yes, all those families got a flag, and all those families were told that their child or father or mother died over there. And then when you would read the news and they'd say, this month, 25 service members died in Iraq, you would assume that that number included your loved one. But what you don't know is the number was actually 152. They wouldn't say, well, your son... Luckily, he didn't die in combat. He did get shot several times by an insurgent. But he died in Germany, so we're not counting that. You, When you'd see those um, reports come out, you would assume that included yours. I think that's the same thing they did during Hurricane Katrina. I think the final number was somewhere around 2,900 official deaths. And if you tell 7,000 families that your loved one lost during was lost during Hurricane Katrina, and you're not talking to the other... 6,999 people around you, you would assume that you are one of that 2,900. It wasn't that bad. You can fiddle with these numbers. You can change facts. You can change narratives. You can hide the truth. And we all know that. But we all accept it at the same time. And we find ourselves, when we read stories that support our narrative or feed our fear... We believe those stories. And if we come across an article that doesn't support our narrative or makes us think something better about somebody we should hate, we just go, nah, that's disinformation, misinformation, that's propaganda. It's so weird, right? We're smart enough to realize this. But I do it too. I do it too, right? We don't have time to go out and research all this stuff on our own. So 90% of the stuff that I read, we just accept... I don't care anything about... I, listen, I'll say this. I hope everyone at Burning Man is fine. Whether or not they're exploding or happy bola or they're just mildly inconvenienced. I hope they're fine, but really I don't care anything about it. And I didn't care anything about it until I started looking more into it and it started to turn into a topic of this show. And it makes you wonder how many other just normal news stories are out there that I just read and go, huh, and move on with my day. They really have these... Deep and possibly true, possibly life-changing stories behind them, but because we don't have the time to really examine them, we read them and go, huh, move on to the next one. And what happens when one day those are our stories being told? Those are the most important moment in our life, maybe the last moment in our life. Maybe this article reflects a very untrue version of the last hours of our existence on earth and we hoped as that event was unfolding we hoped i everyone's going to know this story people are going to know the truth my death won't be for nothing maybe we're thinking that maybe we're just dying in agonizing pain not thinking of anything else but what happens when those are our stories being told And not told accurately. Actually upholding a falsehood. Building a lie. I mean on one hand it won't matter because we'd be dead. But on the other hand it's just crazy to think that. 
something monumentous could be happening and it's so buried under lies it's so buried under bs that it's unrecognizable to the truth what happens when it's our stories that someday someone's just reading while they're drinking their morning coffee and just go hmm and move on with their day deadrabbitradio gmail.com is going to be our email address you can also just I'm so dehydrated dude I mean I'm way sicker than I thought I was <coughs> I thought I was feeling better but I hope you guys enjoyed that episode deadrabbitradio gmail.com is going to be our email address you can also just up at facebook.com slash deadrabbitradio tiktok is at deadrabbitradio Dead Rabbit Radio is the daily paranormal conspiracy and true crime podcast. You don't have to listen to it every day, but I'm glad you listened to it today.